I like to think of it like you build the best picture frame you possibly could. Just the drums, the sequencing, the strings, the keyboards, whatever it is, whatever you need. Maybe it's almost nothing, but whatever it is, you make this wonderful picture frame. And then if you play one note in there, that one note is all people hear, but it's the best sounding one note. Right. It just looks great. It's like if like, like a picture frame that's at the Louvre in Paris. Anything you put in there is gonna look awesome. <laughs> right. But if you got a picture frame from Walmart, you could be like the best player in the world that's still just, well, <laughs> kind of crappy. <laughs> So I always say... Great analogy there. I yeah, like the that. picture frame is so important. So I always say this, I spend like maybe 75% of the time on everything other than the guitar. Right. That way I'm playing just in this awesome environment and I can really pick and choose every little nuance of what I'm playing. But I know you spend a lot of time on your melodies, getting them right. And because that's the voice, instead of having the lyrics, you have to, the phrasing is so important then, it becomes even more important. Yes, um, you want to be like a singer. The only songs popping in my mind are the ones that we're playing on tour. But like, for example, I play this Japanese song called Amagi Goe. <laughs> much humanness as you possibly can. That way, it really doesn't matter what sound, if you're playing through a huge stack or a little practice amp like this, you're still the singer. It's like if a singer sings in the room or sings at the Tokyo Dome or whatever, it's still the voice. So if you can get your guitar to be that voice, wherever you sing is, is where you're singing. So that, that's a big part of my playing, making the choice, again, choices. How long do you hold out the notes? You hold them out like a singer or you hold them out like a guitar player? You know what I mean? If you hold them out like a singer. It's kind of a vocal phrase. It's not like a guitar phrase. Right. Da -da 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 -da. It's not like it, guitars are. <laughs> That's a guitar phrase. Right. So if you kind of, what's the word in English? <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird, Rick. I'm telling you, it's so weird. Uh, conscious effort. Okay. You oh my God, you're making a conscious effort to make a conscious effort to yeah, think of yeah, conscious exactly. effort. Exactly. <laughs> you have to make a conscious effort at first. Eventually, you become the singer and you just sing. Mm -hmm. But like when you decide, you have to make a conscious effort on every note that you play. How long do I want to hold it? Sometimes other outside forces make you decide how long you want to hold it. For example, like I, I play this melody. If I've got more sustain than this, I'm gonna hold it out much longer. Right. But it dies, so I gotta do something. Playing to the sound. Play to the sound that you have. Yeah. Ideally, you don't want to play to the sound you have. You, ideally, you want to play to the sound that you want to get out. Right. But this is, you know, we're here, it's casual. Yeah. But like when you're performing or recording, you set it up in a way that you can, you know, interpret the melodies the way you like. So, but this is a big one, and I hope that there's a lot of uh, young people playing guitar that can get something from. The biggest thing that I can think about is how to extend the notes, connecting notes from one thing. <laughs> No space in there. No. How do you connect the notes? A lot of times what, what people do when they learn someone's solo, they'll play all the fast licks correctly, but they'll slide off any notes that sustain for a long time. I did this thing where I was watching YouTube videos and, and talking about what people were playing. And they're like learning my souls and stuff. And a lot of them had like super chops, but they'd always trail off the notes too fast. I'm like, that note I intended to play really long. That's an important note. Right. Why are you giving it such short <laughs> shrift on that note? Right. Give that note. That's the note that matters. I'd like to take a second to talk to you about this channel. 
This is actually Rick Beato too. I've had it since the beginning of my main channel and many of you are not subscribed. As a matter of fact, 87% of the people that watch this channel regularly are not subscribed. So I encourage you to hit the subscribe button on this channel and on my main channel. This will help me get even more of my dream guests and help continue to grow both channels. Thank you. When you're the one making, creating these, some, these solos and melodies, you're the one who decides. Do you slide off it quickly? Do you stop and put breaks in between? Those are the decisions that each person will make to tailor to their own taste. That's a big part of playing and a big part of your style though is the ends of the notes are just as important as the, the front parts of them. Yeah. Huh. When I watch you play, I've always thought to myself, it doesn't matter what string you're on, what part of the guitar you're on. You do a half step bends, you do whole step, you do all types of things that are really unguitaristic, honestly. Aww. You play a lot of unguitaristic things, mm. I think because of this, where you'll do Aww. a bend where some people will just go play something at the third fret on the G string, play that note B flat, and you'll do, but you'll play at the second fret and bend into it. Ah, uh, okay. You know, things like that where you don't even think about it. Well, I do think about well, it. Well, you do think about it, but it's but you don't have to, like you don't play these bum notes or anything, even when you're shifting, because you do a lot of shifts in your playing. Boy, I fooled you with that one. <laughs> you do, you are you are moving around on the neck. You'll, you'll play down low, then you'll shift up to a note. And it's so, you're so accurate with that stuff. Yeah. As long as you think so. I try to be as accurate as possible, but at the top priority is the performance. Like if you're playing live, yeah. accuracy is like right around number three. Performance and pitch and then accuracy and all those things. When you're studio, it's performance and accuracy equal because you have that freedom to play as long as many takes as you like. Yeah. So why not be as perfect to the vision as you want to be? Um, and you don't have to perform for anybody. So that's a nice thing. But like what you're saying about bending into notes and unlike a guitarist, for example, I think a lot of people can get something from this concept here. Like for example, if the chord's F sharp, uh, and, and um, Marty, play us all over this F sharp pad, right? So most normally, when you know, might do something like that. Right. An F sharp arpeggio into an F sharp root. That's the first thing they do. But I might say, I might do this. So that way on the F sharp, you've got, you've got an interesting note that you're landing on and you start by. And you do a bunch of different bends mm -hmm. that if you, I don't even know how to play it without bending it. <laughs> Because I'm constant, like I was saying before, consciously trying to avoid the types of picking and phrasing that you hear everywhere. So by, it's kind of on, what's the word? Um, okay, what's the Japanese word? Dai uh, hantai. Hangyaksha. <laughs> it's kind of rebellious. Uh -huh. It's rebellious. Like jazz, originally, you know about jazz, but a lot of those things was like breaking all these rules and playing playing from a half step below and all yeah. those things. So it's like like baby jazz, you know what I mean? So like if it's F sharp, I'm like, fuck you F sharp, I'm playing F. And I'm playing, I'm not only that, I'm playing a flat second on that. You see what I'm saying? Love it. It's kind of rebellious to like, the chord is F sharp, but I'm doing that. And you know what I do a lot? is if the chord is like, say B, I'll start the solo on. So you've got this going on. That's the first My thing a guitar interval. teacher tells you not, never to do. Right. But you do it and voila, it sounds great. So it's kind of like a rebellious attitude. But if you think about it, there's a million ways to do it. I mean, I just showed a couple of them, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect example right there. Was it? Yeah, that's a perfect demonstration. Well, I think what, what also might be a thing is um, I don't do the, well, I kind of I rebel against the scale and mode type of thing. So like, yeah. for example, I don't know. Like, so is that in a different mode? or whatever, I'm... Um, 
It's like I started, I mean, F, I'm still thinking the chord is F minor, just yeah. so you know. So I did all that stuff right, and then, and then here's a... It's still F sharp minor, I'm, I'm, a, I'm in F sharp major. Yeah. Who cares? But you, if you can believe it, if that's the note you're hitting in your head, that's what you play. So I, I do a lot of that. See what I'm saying? It's like, it, that doesn't sound like it's all in the same mode or scale, or is it maybe? No, it's not. It's not. No, and it sounds amazing. If, if you think it sounds amazing, Rick says it sounds amazing. <laughs> so let's come up with a name for this.